Hello team and welcome to today's video for Google Sheets where we're going to be looking at the import range function. We'll start off by looking at how to import one range. I'll show you how to simplify the function and then we'll see how to combine multiple ranges to append data. Let's jump in. To begin, I'll enter equals import range into this cell to begin our function where the two required arguments are the spreadsheet URL as well as the string or range we are looking to import. The spreadsheet URL does need to be placed in quotation marks, so I'll add those to the function, head to the spreadsheet I want to gather data from, and copy the entire URL right before where you see the word edit. I'll paste that URL in between the quotation marks to wrap up this argument. After a comma, we come to the range string argument, which also needs to be placed in quotation marks. My data begins at cell A1, so I'll add that in after a colon. Since my data continues to column D, I'll just add the letter D so that all my data is imported. Close quotations, close parentheses, and click enter. You'll see that my data from one of my tabs within my other spreadsheet has been added. On my candy sales data spreadsheet, I have two tabs located at the bottom, March and April. Because I didn't specify which tab I was looking to import, Google Sheets imported March's data. If you'd like to specify which tab Google Sheets imports data from, you can reopen up the function, head to the range string argument, and place the name of the tab in front of the cell range, followed by an exclamation point. After clicking enter, you'll see my data has now been updated to show April's information. One other important thing to note is that this function import range is dynamic. So if I return to my candy sales data spreadsheet, and add a row in the April tab labeled test. If I return back to where I'm importing the data, you'll see it dynamically updates. Now let's look at some tips at how we can simplify this function and make it more dynamic. Reopening the function, let's start by looking at how we can use the dropdown list I have in cell F11 to switch easily between April and March's data. Since I have the name of each tab within the dropdown list, I can remove the name of the tab here in the function. And to the left of the initial quotation marks, I can add the cell reference of F11, add the ampersand symbol, and then click enter. You'll see the data has again been switched to March because that's what's selected in the dropdown. If I change the dropdown option to April, however, you'll see April's data now populates. Another way we can make this function simpler is by removing the URL reference at the very beginning and instead replacing that with a cell reference where the URL is located in cell G11. After clicking enter, you'll see the data is still working correctly. Getting more advanced with the import range function, let's now take a look at how we can append both tabs from candy sales data into the single spreadsheet. In order to do this, we need to make some adjustments to our function. We're able to leave the spreadsheet URL reference the same. However, we do need to label both tabs that we want to import. So instead of a cell reference for the tab we're importing, I'm going to again list March data first. Now that this initial function has been completed, we need to also import the range for April's data. To do this, I'll add a semicolon after the first import range function, and again, add another import range argument. The spreadsheet URL will be the same, so I can click or enter cell G11. For the range string, in quotations, I'll enter April's data, cell A1 through column D, and end quotations. I'll close parentheses here to wrap up this function. And since we now have an array argument, I need to wrap the entire function in closing and opening curly brackets. After clicking enter, you'll see that I have only March's data imported. The reason I'm not able to see April's data is because I included all of column D within the function. If I were to, for example, only go up to row 10 in column D, if I click enter, You'll see now both spreadsheets are appearing. However, there's still some space in between. While one way to solve this would be to only include the number of rows in column D that are included within our data, an even better way to solve for this is to add the query function to the import range arguments we have here. In order to do that, we'll add query to the beginning of this function in which the data is our import range. Going to the very end of the function, I'll add a comma to get to the query portion of the query function. 
For this video, I'll show you how to solve for this issue, but be on the lookout in the future for a video on the query function and how it can help you. For this video, in quotations, I'm going to add the argument to select all data using the asterisk symbol. Then I'll add the additional detail to specify where column one is not blank. And we state that by saying is not null. After a close quotation and close parentheses, if I click enter, you'll see my data is now lining up correctly. One additional change we can make to this argument to remove the column headers since I have those at the very top is that I can start my range in each import range argument from row two in column A. Finally, when I click enter this time, you'll see all my data has been combined. And if I were to go to April's data again and add another test, returning back to my combined ranges, you'll see that appears. Team, I hope you enjoyed these tips today. Please like and subscribe to the channel for future videos and leave comments about additional tips you'd like to see covered.